squaring off. Both sides having qualified for the round of 16, but looking to finish as high as possible in the group table. I'm Donnie Barnes. We see our weather conditions at match time. 68 degrees. See that mist rolling over the hills beyond this picturesque Estadio Pensativo. The wind has been a bit of a factor today, blustering at around 14 miles per hour. As we look at the group table here in Group H, entering this final match of group play. You see Honduras topping the group on goal differential. They would only have to avoid a heavy defeat by four goals or more against Haiti tonight to end up atop that group. Haiti would need to win by at least two goals to best El Salvador and move into second place. As things currently stand, Haiti look as though they will finish third and play against Canada. But again, a 2-0 win, a 3-1 win, and they would leapfrog El Salvador and finish in second place on goal differential. So, an intriguing one. These are two teams that have played well in the tournament. Haiti winning one and losing one. Honduras rolling to two straight victories. Haiti, of course, semifinalists four years ago. Looking forward to a great match. We'll have your anthems, your starting 11s, and your kickoff in just moments. Damas y caballeros, démosle la bienvenida a los equipos nacionales de Honduras y Haití para el partido de esta noche del campeonato sub-17 de CONCACAF 2023. Damas y caballeros, por favor de pie. A continuación, los himnos nacionales de Honduras. Seguidamente, el de Haití.
going to be a lot of blue on the pitch tonight, Honduras and Haiti. La mini H of Honduras and le rouge et bleu of Haiti. Two teams exchanging the traditional handshakes before kickoff. Always wonderful to watch the anthems and see the teams sing along with them. Here is the starting 11 for Honduras. Winners of their first two matches in this group. Jonathan Bueso, the captain, their number five, with their goalkeeper, Owen Macias, between the sticks. Honduras scoring six goals against Suriname. They have outscored their opponents 10 to two in their first two matches. We'll see if that high octane attack can roar along again against Haiti, who again have won one and lost one, but have shown a, a strong attack of their own. We see our officials for tonight's match, led by our center referee, Jose Ignacio Fuentes, assisted by Michel Espinosa and William Chow. The fourth official is Sanchez Bass. Two captains awaiting the coin toss. Schneiler runs Lebrun is captaining Haiti tonight. Jonathan Bueso, as mentioned, wearing the captain's armband for Honduras. Here is Haiti's starting 11. Mentioned Lebrun, the captain, the goalkeeper is Tony Algaran. Haiti scoring three goals against Suriname as they ease to a 3-0 victory in that match. And they will hope to have that attack fire again today. They lost 3-1 in their group opener against El Salvador after scoring the opening goal, conceding three goals after that, one before halftime and two in the second half. But they have qualified for the round of 16 with Suriname taking no points from their three matches. Haiti assured of at least finishing third. As mentioned, they would need to win this game by two goals or more to leapfrog El Salvador and finish second in the group. They would need to win this match by four goals or more to finish top of the group over Honduras. The third place finisher in this group plays Canada in the round of 16. The second place finisher plays Trinidad. So Jose Ignacio Fuentes almost ready to get us underway. Honduras have taken off the uh, warm-up tops and now wearing the white tops with the white shorts, which makes these teams a bit simpler to distinguish from each other. There's our opening whistle, and here we go, with Honduras attacking left to right in this opening half. Haiti looking to pressure as they will move from right to left. So Honduras putting six goals past Suriname, four goals past El Salvador. How many might they score against Haiti? Or might Haiti enjoy a memorable night of their own? Early free kick for Haiti. Who remember reached the semifinals of this competition the last time it was held in 2019. That was their best ever showing in this competition. They qualified for the U17 World Cup. And we remind you again, the Four semi-finalists who reach that semi-final stage in this tournament all qualify for that U-17 World Cup later this year in Peru. Misjudgment of the ball initially by Jordan Garcia, and then he's beaten along the end line and the cross deflects to the top of the box. Early opportunity for Haiti, what a block. Great sliding challenge. David Herrera perhaps preventing a goal and a powerful looking strike. Early warning signs for Honduras. And now a pile up and a foul that goes against Honduras for a Haiti free kick. Frantic opening to this match. We're hoping for action between these two sides. We're getting exactly that over the first 90 seconds. Haiti moving the ball well in the early exchanges. Over the top trying to split two defenders, but it bounces into the arms of Owen Macias. Macias wearing that lime green goalkeeper kit tonight. Tough to miss him. Although he would actually blend in pretty well with the seats here at the Estadio Pensativo. 
colorful setting for this match. Throw for Honduras now and they're attacking third. As we see their head coach, Jose Canales. This will be another throw for Honduras down by the corner flag. Samuel Lamar put that out of play. Jose Calix taking the throw. And they'll have yet another. On this spongy, somewhat slow surface. We've seen the ball stick and hold up on this playing field. It's not a bad surface, it's just not necessarily a quick one and something that players have to be alert to. You can't assume that a ball is going to roll out of play. Sometimes it will stick along those touch lines and end lines. So you have to play it the whole way through. As you see Haiti awarded a foul here, they have a free kick in their own end. That ball went out of play. There was Haiti's head coach, Jean-Baptiste Angelo. Sequence of early throw-ins and fouls here. And Honduras with a free kick just inside that far touch line. So Clarence Jean throwing his hands up saying, I didn't touch him, but he was whistled for it. Free kick being readied by Johan Navas. Navas thumping it into the box. Out comes the keeper. He fumbles it. Sliced clearance. And now at the second try, Tony Algarin fortuitously able to gather up and calm things down a bit. Probably could have done with holding that ball a little bit and letting things settle, but his team are on the back foot again here. It's not the most assured sequence for Haiti's goalkeeper or for his back line for that matter who sliced a couple of clearances. They get away with it. Well, Garin's made some good saves in the first two matches of this group phase. Good turn. And that's a great ball down the middle. And it finds the goalkeeper, Macias trying to pick out the run of Victor Joseph there and nearly did. He would have been through. So playing tonight to finish determining who finishes where in this group and determine, finalize those knockout round of 16 matchups. We already know that the United States will, States will face the Dominican Republic on Saturday, as will Mexico against Nicaragua. Trinidad and Tobago awaiting this result to see who they'll play. Meanwhile, Honduras may be a chance for the opening goal. A scrambled sequence. Now two players slide together. Play still alive. Man goes down in the box. Referee says get up. No foul, no penalty, just a goal kick. This was Saul Estrada. <laughs> when you see that replay, I think he's being warned by referee Jose Ignacio Fuentes. Not to try that again. Maybe a little fortunate on second viewing there not to be shown a card for simulation. Certainly did not appear to be any contact on the looks that we had. So good decision by the referee, give him credit, which officials seldom get as they're well aware. Two hands in the back there from Kayef Tomlinson. Honduras with this free kick. It was not a convincing header. Straight up into the air, flying back to clean up. 
Work by Johan Navas. Now up the pitch it goes. Another whistle. Offside given against Honduras. Fair challenge by Alessandro Maldonado. Winning possession for his side, which is then given away. Player stays down for Haiti. Play continues for now. Now a free kick for them. And we'll see about that injury as the referee goes over to check on the player down. That's Victor Sayat. Maybe that back leg whacking against the thigh of Alessandro Maldonado. Not the best use of the free kick, trying to switch it to the far side, did not reach there. Nearly dispossessed was Jose Calix. Now free kick for Honduras. Very whistle happy opening nine minutes. The veteran roll out of the ball by Jordan Garcia. Some players don't learn that until they're in their 20s or even their 30s, how to steal an extra couple yards before a free kick with that casual little rollout. That's a neat ball to the left. Taken in by Sayat. Plays it centrally, trying to get himself turned and getting turned indeed. Tomlinson does well. Now Sayat again, low cross. And it just ran under the foot of Tomlinson as he couldn't bring it in. Now hold up play required from Russell Cruz. He does it well. Thudded forward by Herrera, but aimlessly so. And a throw in for Haiti as Herrera holds up his hands. Calm down, says Jean-Baptiste Angelo. Not too often that you have as many whistles as we've had in the first 10 minutes, and yet the pace somehow still feels very frantic. And that's part of why Angelo was encouraging his team to settle themselves. Neither team has really settled into this match yet. Back to Elgarin. Samuel Lamar. Anderson Joseph. It's decent ball forward. It worked out for Haiti. Tomlinson laid it off. Good ball right down the middle of the pitch. And the foul given, relieving the pressure on Jose Calix. It was a good ball with the outside of the boot that nearly split the defense wide open. Just had a little bit too much on it in the end. And Schneider runs LeBron trying to chase it down, doing so overzealously. Haiti force a turnover. Here they come down the right. This is LeBron. He has two to aim for, now three in the box. LeBrun trying to pick one out, and it's headed over. He did pick out Victor Joseph, but Joseph couldn't keep it down. Goal kick, but warning bells for Honduras. Good cross. And Joseph just didn't get up early enough, did he? Got caught underneath it a little bit. Yeah, still in his up jump when that ball arrived, not able to get over it and head it downward. So Honduras, who had more of the early possession, but it's Haiti who have carved out the best chance so far. That's clever in the corner from Saul Estrada to earn the throw. A 
along the end line, trying to win the corner. And unable to do so this time was Maldonado. Trying to dink it off the defender, but it's a goal kick. Now Honduras lining up a shot from distance. That's ambitious to put it mildly. Johan Navas nowhere near. <laughs> Heavy touch then, putting it out into touch from Anderson Joseph. on by LeBron, but nobody further advanced for Haiti. Ooh, almost dwelling on the ball too long was Macias, and it falls back to Haiti. This is LeBron. White shirts around him. LeBron trying to navigate that traffic. Still turning with it. Now has a strike. It deflects, and it goes across the end line for a Haiti corner. Shaky passage of play for Honduras. Owen Ma Macias, who Took a second touch and then a third and I think a fourth. Almost had it deflect into his own net. And then gave the ball away. He and his team not out of danger yet as the sequence leads to this set piece. First corner of the match for Haiti. Taken by Sabatian Joseph. Joseph with the arcing in swinger, headed down, off the line, what a clearance. A diving save of a goal by Jose Calix. It looked like it would be 1-0 Haiti. Somehow it stayed out thanks to Calix. It's another corner. The rainbow delivery, a very good one. Looked like it came off two Haitian players actually. He was headed for the corner. This next one bounces all the way through and Honduras again looking very shaky defending. Again they get away with it. But it looked as though Kaif Tomlinson and Britis Julian may have both made contact with that delivery a moment ago. It would have been interesting to see whose goal it would have been if it had nestled in the corner, as it certainly appeared that it would. This is going to be a free kick for Haiti. Needless foul by Michael Morales. Ball was going out of play. It would have been a Honduras throw. So a quarter of an hour gone. Really interesting early exchanges. See that foul again. Just a little tug with the arm. Reaching out there, Morales. No need for that. This team is going to have possession otherwise. Instead, they have to defend this set piece. Victor Joseph will deliver. wanting him to replace the ball. Well, twice already Honduras have looked shaky defending high balls into their box. Let's see what they do this time. Toward the top of the six yard box, this one flicked away and across the end line for a third Haitian corner. After Honduras exerted some early pressure in the opening six or seven minutes, now it's Haiti's turn to have an extended spell. They were inches away from opening the scoring a few minutes ago. Sabatian Joseph is going to take this corner from the opposite side, so this would be an outswinging ball. In it comes, the heads go up. Toward the edge of the box, blasted off a defender. Still rattling around, still not dealt with by Honduras, and then curled to the six yard box, nobody there in blue. Oh, and Macias finally able to calm things. That's well done by Clarence Jean. Letting the ball run all the way back to the keeper now, and oh, that's dangerous. <laughs> but coolly done in the end by Tony Algarin. Acting like Ederson there for a moment. Now 
Now is it Honduras' turn to threaten? Not just yet. Haiti back on it. Here they come again. Victor Joseph dispossessed. Just one player forward for Honduras. The ball intended for him is cut out by Luxon Blais. Nobody getting much time on the ball right now. Players flying around. That's a good fall forward. And then a outside of the boot attempt to switch play to the right-hand side by Sabatian Joseph that didn't work the way he intended. 19th minute, nil-nil. Plenty of intrigue, though. And Haiti needing to not just win, but win by two goals or more to move from third to second in the group. Remember, the top three in each group of four in this competition all advanced to the round of 16. So both these teams have qualified for the knockouts. This ball to the penalty spot, headed up in the air. Out comes the goalkeeper, Algaran, and he gathers ahead of Saul Estrada. So both these teams will feature in the knockout rounds. Looking for positioning now. That could be important. More on that momentarily as Haiti give the ball away in the center of the park. Alessandro Maldonado making inroads down the left. Cutting back inside and whipping a ball toward the box much too far for Saul Estrada. And a goal kick. So the winner of this group, which right now would be Honduras, as long as they don't lose this game by four goals or more, they are likely to top the group. That Group H winner plays Bermuda on Sunday in the round of 16. Oh, what a good flick around that corner. And down the right side, here comes Sebastian Joseph into the box. Joseph touched around the post by Owen Macias. Who keeps this at nil-nil after a great move by Haiti. They'll have their fourth corner. Corner taken low along the ground. Touched out high and miscommunication and now Honduras sprinting away. This is one-on-one. -on -one. It's Jonathan Bueso with defenders racing back for Haiti. And now Bueso out to the right. Can Saul Estrada track this down? Yes, he can. Along the end line, his cross just over the head of the onrushing Russell Cruz. Bodies tumbling over. Referee sees nothing wrong with either player. And so on we go. Victor Joseph. Clear moment of time and space on the ball. Now touching it wide, Clarence Jean closed and put out into the touch by David Herrera. Now the bouncing ball to the edge of the area, settled by Lebrun. Pulls it back for Joseph. Joseph looks to ping it in low, and it deflects right along, and wide and out for a goal kick. Kaif Tomlinson had it run away from his foot. And so we remain goalless despite both sides looking threatening. So again, the winner of this group plays Bermuda on Sunday. The second place team, the runner up, will face Trinidad also on Sunday. The third place finisher plays Canada on Saturday. So not only do you get one less day of rest before the knockout round by finishing third instead of second or first in the group, but you also have to play Canada in that round of 16. As things stand, that would be Haiti playing Canada on Saturday. And that would be a tasty matchup. Canada would be the favorites, of course. But again, Haiti reached the semifinal last time this tournament was held in 2019. And 
you can see where and why they would cause anybody some problems potentially. That matchup certainly not assured just yet. A quarter of the way through this match. It looked like good work by Victor Sayat to keep that ball in play, but in fact it had gone out. In the other match in progress over at the Estadio Doroteo Guamuch Flores in Guatemala City, Jamaica have struck first to lead Costa Rica 1-0. Costa Rica, who'd won their first two matches to top that group, behind against Jamaica, who were stunned by Guadeloupe a couple days ago. It's been a very entertaining group stage in this competition. Seeing more and more of the smaller nations in CONCACAF improving and more able to spring upsets more and more often. Meanwhile, Schneiderens Lebrun against two defenders trying to pull it to the top of the box, but one of those defenders was in the way. Lebrun avoiding committing the foul, almost stole the ball, and it was off Honduras last, and it's a Haiti throwdown by the corner flag as Honduras protest and felt it should have been otherwise. Eric Vallecillo defending over there, thought that it had gone off Lebrun last. In for Joseph, tracked closely and turning it over, and now it's a Honduras throw, and now it's Haiti's turn to protest. So 1-0 Jamaica over Costa Rica in that game, 0-0 in this match. Honduras, it is space to come forward now. Trying to split the lines with that ball forward, it was intended for Jose Calix. Now a Haiti throw. So Costa Rica leading Group G coming into tonight with six points. Jamaica with three, Cuba with three, Guadeloupe with three. Guadeloupe essentially eliminated because of goal differential. Haiti now forward once more. It's Joseph taking aim for that near post, but pulling it just wide. More promise, though, from Haiti. They continue to be the more threatening of the two over these opening 25 minutes. So Cuba, who earlier today defeated Guadeloupe by four goals to nil, drew level with them on points, but passed them on goal differential because of that big win. So it's Cuba in third, Jamaica currently in second, Costa Rica in first. But again, Jamaica leading that match and going down and clutching his leg, Anderson Joseph for Haiti. It's going to result in a yellow card for Honduras's Jonathan Bueso. And Honduras's coaching staff not agreeing with that decision. Let's see what we see on the replay. It does fly in a bit wildly. Way so, and he was late, didn't appear to get the ball. Not sure the degree of actual contact that there was, but did look a little reckless on first replay there. So first booking of the match for Honduras. And a free kick for Haiti as a result. <laughs> Haiti have outshot Honduras seven to one in this first half. Possession's about even. But the shots are definitely not. Haiti trying to line up another one here. Joseph swings it in. Out comes the keeper. He doesn't get there. But the header goes well wide, and it's a goal kick. Well, Haiti pass up another opportunity. Owen Macias got himself stranded there. 
came for the ball, did not get really anywhere near. You see the keeper come and not get there. You expect the ball to bounce into the net, but it did not. And Haiti do need to turn this superiority into a goal fairly soon, you would feel. Especially keeping that goal differential in mind. Another ball in is another good delivery. It's not clear yet. Now it's stabbed away. Honduras continue to have issues with those aerial deliveries into the box, and I'm sure whoever they end up playing in the round of 16 will be taking note of that. In Honduras, 10 goals for, two against in their first two group matches. They've looked very good, very strong, as they always are. But perhaps some vulnerability is at the back being exposed by Haiti in this first half, even though they've not found the net. This is Honduras' 19th appearance in the U-17 championship. They have been a very regular participant since the competition began in the 80s. That's not the best ball back from Haiti. Good cleaning up, defending by Luxon Blaise. He has to put it out for a throw, and this will be the first time Honduras have had an attacking action in quite a while. And somewhat self-inflicted from a Haitian perspective. Throw in from David Herrera. Honduras would like to possess the ball a bit here to reclaim a foothold in this match. It's a throw for Haiti as we approach the 30th minute. Now Honduras chance to advance on the left, but again, looks in Blaise, cuts it out. A couple nervous moments aside, Haiti have looked pretty solid over these opening 30. And they will feel that they should be ahead. Space again on that right side. Honduras is going to have to do something tactically because Sabatian Joseph has been free down that right side quite a few times in this first half. Now Honduras, lots of numbers forward, but that's because they were offside. Three different players offside. Laid off neatly. Joseph switching to his right, laying it back for a strike. It came off a body and offside. It came off the Haitian player who was in an offside position. And again, Haiti in a promising spot on the pitch. Victor Joseph letting it go. And if his own man hadn't been in the way, who knows where it might have ended up. Tough to tell whether it was going straight at Owen Macias or whether it was heading for a corner. Did appear to be on goal. Plenty of power behind it. Honduras trying to string something together. It runs out off of Jose Calix. Haiti wanting to play with tempo. That's an acrobatic clearance by Bueso. He's had the lone yellow card of the match. Another free kick for Haiti. Honduras giving away a lot of attacking free kicks, even though this one will come from just inside that attacking third. Or attacking half, I should say, yeah, right through the back. 
Jose Calix. Pretty easy call. Haiti were almost in on the right. Schneider runs LeBron, who has looked lively and threatening. As he sometimes comes centrally, sometimes down the right. Stab toward the middle. Henderson Joseph from distance. Haiti continue to knock, although that's probably not Joseph's strength. And Jean-Baptiste Angelo and his coaching staff sharing a little chuckle. Can't fault the confidence of Joseph there, certainly backing himself. Again, Tony Elgarin living adventurously. His team have a free kick. Well, Elgarin not at all afraid to dribble past an attacker or two. There's the foul again. Jonathan Bueso, be careful there. He's on a yellow card, committing another foul. This one did not appear to be yellow card worthy, but boy, that is a little rough from Victor Sayat. A lot of fouls in this first half. I have to say, I think Jose Ignacio Fuentes has gotten just about all of them right. He also was spot on with his decision not to award Honduras an early penalty. So much space in the midfield for both these sides. This is offside. Haiti wanting to get the ball back in play quickly. We've seen them do that repeatedly in this first half. Anytime there's a dead ball situation, they want to get on with it. Have to keep that tempo high. Crunching challenge. Ball falls to a Haitian foot. This game still really hasn't settled down. Ball careening around wildly. The first touches aren't always great, but both teams fully committed to going forward and attacking. Haiti doing it much better without making it count on the score sheet yet. That's a great switch out to the right, just clearing the defender's head and then finding the feet of Victor Joseph, but then harmlessly wide from distance. Haiti have been unafraid to shoot from well outside the box. Haven't really been able to trouble Owen Macias from that distance. Closest they've come was from that corner kick in the 14th minute that was headed toward the corner of the goal but was cleared off the line by Jose Calix. A diving clearance at that. That's why it's nil-nil. Joseph, intelligent ball, didn't quite connect with the run of Sabatian Joseph. So there's Victor Joseph, number 10, Sabatian Joseph, number 18 for Haiti. Aaron Sean taking the throw. Victor Joseph, looping into the box but overcooking it. Along the end line, somehow that stayed in play. It's an acrobatic effort by the Haitian player to try it, play it off the defender for a corner kick. Didn't quite work out for him, though. Good tracking back and defending by Andresen Joseph. And that's a nice ball forward for Victor Joseph. So three different Josephs on the pitch for Haiti, if you're getting confused. You have Andresen Joseph here on the left side, Victor Joseph on the right, Sabatian Joseph as well.
Hades throw down by the corner. And Doris continuing to have to do the bulk of the defending, even though they're the ones that top the group right now. It's been a strong first half from Haiti. Miss kick. And Doris might be onto something here. Sliced ball and a good ball. In is Jose Calix. Calix delivering across to the near post. Well defended. Crucial header. I believe that was Clarence Jean with the clearance. Then LeBrun was muscled off it. Honduras may be starting to grow back into the game. Victor Joseph giving chase, trying to touch it around David Herrera. Herrera stood his ground and earned the foul. Hands all over David Herrera. Victor Joseph there also pulled the shirt. Well, that's not a good ball. Cut out easily by Bueso. And he took a heavy touch. And again, he's on a yellow card. Anytime you're on a yellow and you take that heavy touch, Bueso almost lunged into a challenge after that bad touch. He did well to pull out of it at the last instant. The last thing Honduras want, because again, they're going to be in the round of 16 regardless. Last thing they need is for their captain to get himself sent off and then be suspended for that round of 16 match. I do wonder if head coach Jose Canales will think about taking Bueso off at halftime just to make sure that doesn't happen. Garen trying to distribute to the halfway line, but overhitting it. Jamaica continuing to lead Costa Rica 1-0, 39 minutes into their match. We're 40 minutes into this one. Honduras and Haiti, 0-0. Honduras to the attack. They've had just one official shot in this match, but now along the end line, looking to get it square. Going down, looking for a penalty. Russell Cruz, nothing given. Cruz pounding the turf. He's not seen much of the ball in this first half. Still just the one shot for Honduras, 10 officially for Haiti. They advance again. Sabatian Joseph, wide once more. So that's shot number 11 for Haiti. Now a lot of them have come from outside the box. Not many of them have truly troubled Owen Macias. But Haiti continue to advance the ball more effectively, at least into that final third, than Honduras. Uno, uno. And El Salvador, who won earlier today, 4-0, against Suriname. They are hoping that Haiti does not score and does not win this match. Because that would assure El Salvador finishing second in the group and avoiding Canada in the round of 16. That is a clear push and a free kick for Haiti. All given away by Saul Estrada. Number of fouls by Honduras in this first half. Just a little bit reckless and unnecessary. Trying to go for the ball, but the man is right between you and the ball. You have to just get tight to him without pushing through him like that. So another set piece to defend for Honduras. Owen Macias setting up his men. 
two-man wall from this distance. Manned by Maldonado and Estrada. Delivered well and headed in, and there's the goal that Haiti had deserved. But it won't count, it's waved off. The flag is up, it's offside. Well, Haiti thought their pressure had finally told on the scoreboard. But the flag wipes it out, and we stay nil-nil. Again, though, another free kick, another set piece, another aerial delivery into the box. Not dealt with, not defended by Honduras. That's a goal kick. A couple minutes to go until halftime. Honduras could use halftime. Let's see this again. It's the right call. Very good decision by the linesman. Player was clearly behind the last defender when the ball left the taker's foot. That was Clarence Jean who delivered the ball gorgeously. Hayden hey. will be desperate to find that goal before halftime. They would feel Disappointed if they go into half level despite being so dominant in this first half in terms of chances created and territorial possession. The overall possession again has been fairly even, 52 to 48 percent. But the shot's 11 to 1 in Haiti's favor. Credit these officials in the first half. Again, they continue to get just about every call right that we've seen. Jose Ignacio Fuentes, the center referee, waving away a couple penalty claims. That offside decision, spot on. Chalk off a would-be Haiti goal. Don't take that for granted. Referees and officials work hard to put themselves into position to train, to learn, to practice, to get those calls right. They've gotten them right in this first half. Just one additional minute to be played in this opening 45, which will turn into 46. <laughs> Honduras will be eager to get to halftime and try to sort some things out. Final seconds of this first half. Cuba put together one more attack. Haiti, excuse me. Cuba played in one earlier today. That's a bad back pass and suddenly danger for Haiti. And he might be in here, Russell Cruz, in the final seconds of the opening half. It's Cruz on his right and Cruz opens the scoring. A self-inflicted wound by Haiti. They give a goal away right on the stroke of halftime. After being on the back foot most of this opening half, Honduras strike and lead 1-0. A needless, dangerous back pass, splitting his own men and handing Russell Cruz a gift. He still had a lot to do, Cruz, and he did it well. Going back to the near post, caught the goalkeeper, Algarin, leaning the other way. Might have taken a slight deflection off the defender, not sure, but it's Cruz right before halftime. Claiming the first goal of the night. Well, that's a sickener for Haiti. 
They played so well in this first half. Just no need for that back pass. No need at all. And there's halftime. Haiti did everything but score. Honduras did little but score. But sometimes that's the mark of champions and really good teams. When you're not playing well, you hang in, you survive. When given an opportunity, you pounce. That's exactly what the boys in white and blue did. The boys in blue and red will have to regroup and recover from that blow as the second 45 comes your way in just a bit. First, we'll have our halftime highlights and stats and more in a moment. At the break, Honduras 1, Haiti 0.
Players back onto the pitch for the second half here at the Estadio Pensativo in Antigua. 1-0 to Honduras after a half in which Haiti dominated most of the chances. Had 11 shots, just two for Honduras, but Honduras able to cash in right before the break off a mistake of a back pass and punishing Haiti harshly for that mistake. And we'll see what kind of response Haiti have in this second half. Again, they are qualified for the round of 16, as are Honduras, regardless of what happens here tonight. Haiti did have a chance to possibly move from third to second in the group if they were to win this match by two goals or more. And with the way they played in the first half and the chances they created, they could well have given themselves an opportunity to do that here in the second half. As it stands, they would need to score at least three without reply for that to happen. Not impossible, but a much steeper hill now to accomplish that. They make a second half change as they send Miguelson Toussaint onto the pitch in place of Victor Sayat. Looks like they're also <laughs> going to see Honduras make a change with De La Cacho coming on. So it looks like one change apiece. And if we're referee Jose Ignacio Fuentes gets us back underway. So Russell Cruz with a lone goal so far in the second minute of first half stoppage time. In this second half, Cuba kicking from left to right in the blue, Honduras right to left in the white. And off we go with Haiti trying to turn this around after being gut punched right before the end of the first half. See if they can continue to create opportunities they w the way they did throughout the opening 45. Samuel Lamar. Calmly rolling to looks and lies. Claren Jean. Britis Julian keeping it moving. This would be good for Haiti to have some early possession in the second half. Reestablish that they're still very much in this game despite that disappointing end of the first half. Taylor Cacho on for Jonathan Bueso. That's a change we suspected. Bueso on that yellow card. Don't want him to be suspended for the round of 16 match. So he's taken off. Haiti knocking at the start of the second half. And they'll have another attacking throw. Into the box with that long throw along the end line. It stayed in play, but rolls right into the arms of Macias. Good effort along that end line by Schneiderens Lebrun. More good touches from Haiti. They continue to play well overall. They are going to be dangerous in the round of 16 if they play Canada as it currently appears they will. That is not a matchup Canada can afford to take lightly, even though they will be the favorites. Foul here given for the trip against Michael Morales. Forward from Toussaint to the edge of the box, cushioned back. Laid off for Joseph, falls for Jean. The top of the area, it's curled again. Looked like it might have been a head collision there. Anderson Joseph went down clutching the side of his head. Ball runs out of play. Second half beginning much the way the first half went, right in, until the final kick of it just about, with Haiti 
That'd be more of the territorial threat without creating anything decisive. I think Jean-Baptiste Angelo will be happy with just about everything in that first half except his team's finishing and, well, the way they finished the half, giving away that goal. They're on the edge of the box again, just air kicking it was Victor Joseph as he tried to take it over his shoulder. Now, can Honduras create something going forward? Again, not a ton of urgency for them coming into this game in terms of consequences in the group standings since they were almost assured of topping the group unless they lost this game by at least four goals. And Haiti had the chances in the first half to make that a lot more uncomfortable for them, but they are especially comfortable at the top of the group currently, even though they lead by just a single goal in this particular game. First half possession was pretty much even, although it didn't necessarily feel like it. Jean unable to reach that ball, but Doris not able to play their way out very effectively. They've been sitting back compactly, not a lot of players forward. Nothing in that, says the referee. Sliced out of play for another Haitian throw. Clarence Jean skimming toward the top of the area. The sequence of throw ins continues for Haiti. Shielded by Joseph. Victor Joseph, good turn. Joseph on his left, curling back post for just a moment. Thought maybe that had a chance to curl inside that post. Straightened out too much though and was well wide in the end. Haiti continued to shoot from anywhere and everywhere. Mostly off target, but they have spurned a few glorious chances as well. Through the lines. Flag has stayed down and having to come out to claim it, Tony Algarin, he was quick off his line and needed to be as it turned out. As soon as that ball went through, you looked at the linesman wondering if that was offside. Looked like it was to the naked eye, but must have been on. Again, this officiating quartet got seemingly every decision right in the first half, so you trust their judgment. First moment of half danger created by Honduras in the second half. This time the flag is raised. Still 1-0 Jamaica leading Costa Rica in the other match in progress. There you see the offside. Again, a good decision. That linesman's been right on top of things. Clarence Jean on the ball quite a bit in this second half. Sabatian Joseph from distance, and that came off the keeper's hand. Did that go across the end line? No, apparently not. He kept it in play. That was a little bizarre from Owen Macias. That shot was headed wide, it looked like, and 
didn't need to play it. He almost gave away a needless corner. Well, salute Haiti after the uh, sickening way from their standpoint that the first half ended, giving away such a cheap goal after playing so well. They've started the second half very much the way they played most of the first. But trail by a goal to none. And Honduras in not needing to exert themselves too much tonight. Certainly have the quality to score from any half chance as they showed right at the end of the first half. That's offside. Games between these two have always been great at this level. This is the eighth appearance, excuse me, the seventh appearance, or the seventh meeting between these two in the U-17 championship play. Honduras has only won one of those seven. Haiti have won twice. And there have been three draws. The last time they met in this tournament, in 2019, in the quarterfinal, a memorable 1-1 draw that went to penalties, and Haiti won on penalties 4-3 to three to advance to their first ever U-17 championship semifinal. So Honduras finding it tough against Haiti, nothing new. They're doing enough so far today. Just a hint of a trip there and a foul against Russell Cruz, the goal scorer. He's not been able to touch the ball much other than the goal that he took very well. But that's what you ask your striker to do many nights. He might not touch the ball more than a few times on certain 90 minute spans, but when you do, it needs to be quality and it needs to be clinical, and that's what he was in first half stoppage time. shoving between Victor Joseph and De La Cacho. Somehow that snuck over the head of Anderson Joseph. To guard against a little frustration creeping into their game, Haiti. Just sensing a little bit of that over the last couple minutes. Here goes Cruz down the right, put out of play instead. By Blyes. Honduras looking to have a bit of possession now. Forward by Herrera. Nobody there in white. field ball cut out acrobatically and accurately by Miguel Santusson. And then getting on the wrong side of Kaif Tomlinson. No foul there. What sure looked like a shirt pull. And now Haiti with a chance to attack the other direction. Victor Joseph. Joseph trying to back down the defender. Out of the top of the area. A left-footed strike and a diving block. Really good block. Ball still alive for Haiti though. Victor Joseph again, had the corner sealed off. Finds his teammate who puts it on target. I think that was an attempted cross more than a shot. But it was on frame. Macias had to smother it and did. And a Honduras player has stayed down on the edge of the area. And that is Johan Navas. Ah. 
So lots to ponder for Jose Canales as Navas is attended to with the spray. And his team may be saving themselves a little bit for the round of 16. They have not been at their fluid best over this opening hour at all, but still find themselves ahead, which again is often the mark of good teams, and they are that. So back underway as we approach the final half hour of Group H play in this 2023 CONCACAF U17 championship. That's a good touch by Russell Cruz trying to get around the edge. He does. Cruz cutting into the box. Two defenders in blue there to crowd him out, though. Again, it's Russell Cruz causing danger. Now the overlap from David Herrera. And again, Herrera toward the end line. Faked the cross. And maybe too many touches. Herrera never did put the cross in. He had players in white lined up waiting for it. Maybe got a bit too cute. Better sequence, though, from Honduras. This time they've been able to put a full move together in quite a while. That's a goal kick, and we have an hour gone and 30 to go. Russell Cruz, first half stoppage time, still the lone goal tonight. Nice slaloming run by Victor Joseph. Now Clarence Jean and Joseph on the overlap. And able to win the ball eventually when it didn't look like he would, wriggling along that end line. Still Clarence Joseph, his cross skimmed off a defender and didn't wind up where he intended. That would have been spectacular if it had found a Haitian head or foot and wound up in the net. Clarence Joseph almost creating a goal by himself. But it has been a story of almost for Haiti over the opening 61 minutes tonight. Still time for them to change that narrative, of course. Attempted through ball, but a wall of white is there to stop that. And again, Haiti are in the round of 16, regardless of what happens here. So even if it never goes their way tonight, not fatal at all, they'll still have every chance to make noise in the knockout rounds, as they did four years ago. This is a corner, and so the first attacking set piece of the second half for Haiti now. Remember, they caused Honduras all kinds of problems from set pieces in the first half. Outswinger coming from Sabatian Joseph. Toward that back post, and it almost reached Another Haitian player at the near post. I think that was Andresen Joseph who was lurking. Again, a crucial touch, took it away from him. Now Victor Joseph. You can see Honduras committing multiple players to try to defend him. Curled into the box, headed straight up into the air, out of the edge of the area, still tussled for, and then hammered on goal, and a good save by Macias. What a strike that was, on target from well outside the box. Haiti continued to shoot from all distances and angles, and that time it was a really good effort, and it needed saving. A blast. Fairly close to Macias in the end. He didn't have to sprawl too far to reach that, but so much power behind it, he still had to show strong hands and fists and wrists to beat it away. Haiti continue to knock on the door. And they're gonna come again with Victor Joseph and Joseph has a try. Meanwhile, Jamaica have a second goal against Costa Rica. They're in the 63rd minute now. 
would be quite a result for Jamaica if that holds. That's in Group G. This has to be dealt with by Haiti and is. It's a foul free kick on the halfway line for Haiti. Well, as things currently stand, Jamaica with that two goal lead over Costa Rica, they're both on six points atop Group G and they're both now at plus three in goal differential. So goal difference is the initial tiebreaker. The second tiebreaker is then greater number of goals scored in all group matches. And right now, as Cruz sniffs around for another Haiti mistake, doesn't find the one, one the way he did at the end of the first half. But right now in Group G, it's Jamaica with seven goals scored to six for Costa Rica. So right now, if Costa Rica don't at least pull one back over the rest of that game, if Jamaica are able to maintain that two goal advantage and two goal win or more, it appears as though Jamaica would top Group G, which would be pretty unlikely. It certainly was unlikely at the start of this day. Again, Jamaica having just lost to Guadeloupe two days ago. Meanwhile, Honduras looking for a second goal. Here is Michael Morales. Allowed to run to the edge of the box. Wriggling his way in, Saul Estrada. Estrada squares off the defender. He had a player on the doorstep ready to tap that home, but he could not reach him with it. This continues to be a really entertaining game, even though we've just had the one goal. 25 minutes to go. Skipping away from a challenge, Anderson Joseph. Joseph squaring it to nobody on the edge of the box. Thought he had a player in blue there. Another effort from distance. Thumps into a body. Ritas Julian spreads it on the right. Anderson Joseph all the way across the face. And smothered by Macias. And boy, if Schneider and Lebrun had made a near post run, he might have had a tap in there. I don't think he expected that to make its way all the way through. just won't quite break or fall for Haiti tonight so far. Hooks and Blaise. Not the best ball forward. asking a ton of that attacker down the right and Russell Cruz a bit frustrated at that. Let his side continue to lead thanks to his goal right at the end of the first half. As things stand, Honduras topping the group with a perfect nine points from nine. Doris appear to be headed for a round of 16 match against Bermuda. A game in which they will certainly be the favorites, but that is the beauty of knockout round games. As we know from all kinds of different tournaments at all levels and all different sports. On a single elimination, anything can happen on a given day or night. Part of the drama, part of the fun, unless you're on the wrong end of one of those upsets. Meanwhile, Victor Joseph looking to thread one through, just a bit too high for Kayef Tomlinson, who wanted the ball to his feet instead. So we enter the final quarter of the match, and Honduras ready, what looks like a double change in just a moment. Looking for a foul, and they get one there. Just a slight push. Anderson Joseph made the most of that, but able to win his side a free kick, which gets them out of 
traffic and allows them to move forward now. But then they needlessly give away a throw and you can see the frustration for Sebastian Joseph. This game can be so maddening for so many different reasons when you're on the pitch. Some nights nothing quite happens for you the way you planned or hoped. Some nights most things go the way you planned except for the finishing and you find yourself on the wrong end of the scoreline anyway. That's been the case for Haiti so far over the first 69. Pulling his way forward here. Miguelson Toussaint, his cross deflected off of Kaif Tomlinson safely into the arms of Macias. Been too many giveaways by Victor Joseph tonight. There was one. Should be mopped up and is by Lux and Blaise. Joseph trying to push his way through and he gets the free kick. No real argument from Saul Estrada. So as we head into the final 20, now that substitution will arrive for Honduras and it looks like Haiti going to make changes as well. There are three players coming on for Honduras. This could take a bit to sort out. You can see that Britus Julian is coming off for Haiti, and Dylan Alexis is replacing him. Also looks as though Carri Carriere is coming on for Kaif Tomlinson. A couple changes in the midfield for Haiti. Also, there's Yuri Kuboglo he appears to be set to check in. There he is. We'll have to see who he replaced. For Honduras, meanwhile, Edwin Menguia is coming on in place of Saul Estrada. Estrada not looking very happy to come off. Roby Vargas is going to check in as well. Looks like he's replacing David Herrera. Also, Brian Sines on for Alessandro Maldonado. So six changes at once, three for either side. Adjust your board accordingly. See if those changes change the flow of this game at all over the final 20. Here is the first touch for Yuri Guboglo after coming on a moment ago, looking to cross one. It goes all the way to the back post, knotted up into the air. It's still in play, and a chance for Haiti, and it's over the bar. Another wonderful chance passed up by the boys in blue tonight. Schneider and LeBrun can't believe it. Poor defending by Honduras. Wasn't the best cross necessarily from Guboglo, but it still caused difficulty. Good header back across the face. And it really should have been put away. Victor Joseph tries to wriggle his way in, but out to smother Macias. As his teammate Jose Calix did enough to hold off Joseph until he did. Victor Calix is a big reason why Honduras are winning this match. Remember his diving goal line clearance from a corner in the first half when it was still nil-nil. Really changed this whole match. Haiti scored that early goal. That was about in the 14th minute. It made this whole night feel a lot different for both teams. 
as it is, Haiti's chances of moving up to second in the table dwindling with each passing moment because they'd still have to score not just one, not just two, but three goals at least over the rest of this game in order to do so. But if they'd gotten one early, if they'd taken one of a handful of chances that they created in the first half with their really good play, if they'd not given away that fairly cheap goal right at the end of the first half, that opportunity might feel a lot more realistic for them. A little collision in the center of the park, and Honduras trying to turn that into something positive. Russell Cruz chases this down by the touchline. Bit of space for Jose Calix. His cross lands on the roof of the net. Not sure how he'll feel about this game, Jose Canales. Aside finding a way to win so far, which is always a good trait to have, especially in a short tournament. Carrier. And he's still searching for that first goal of their night. Guboglo. Jean. Cross was stabbed away. Session more clearly in Haiti's favor as we've gone through this match, but I don't think that'll bother Honduras too much. They have a free kick here after this foul. Free kick boomed forward to the top of the box. Initial header missed by Haiti's Samuel Lamar. They do well to scramble it away, and that's good strength on the ball by Carrier. He's having his shirt tugged a bit, too. Now down the right side. Oh, Guboglo had it run away from him. Looked like he was in. Victor Joseph. Square ball. They have a player arriving on the left. He's well found. This is Toussaint. His cross over everyone and out. Again, another good Haiti move. Breaks down with that final ball. Kind of night that makes you pace and mutter to yourself. Still 2 0 Jamaica leading Costa Rica with about 15 minutes to go in that one. As things stand, the way I read the tiebreakers, Jamaica would finish top of that group. And what would be an upset? Goal kick here for Haiti after Nairobi Vargas took a heavy touch. That's clever by Carrier. He's looked good since coming on. Well, running himself into some trouble there briefly. Clarence Jean, helped out by Blaise. Settled by Joseph. He's been really good tonight. Guboglo. Joseph. 
Will he shoot again? Victor Joseph on his left. He does straight at the keeper who spilled it, but is able to fall on top. Meanwhile, Costa Rica have just scored, and now they're back atop that Group G. The goal differential back in their favor. So great drama in that other match. This one has been fun. It's been feisty. It's been a little odd. Honduras leading by a goal. Sort of seeking a second to put the game away. They've not appeared to play with a ton of urgency tonight, Honduras, but they haven't really needed to. And a rare misplay by Haiti results in a Honduras throw. See that ball not going out along the touch line. We've seen that quite a bit over the last couple days. Sometimes as a defender, you can usher that ball out, but not as much on this pitch. Ten minutes remaining. The stoppage time goal from Russell Cruz late in the first half, still holding up. Ball full, falls on the edge of the box. Carrier squaring it, has it back now. Carrier ran out of space, but plays a good ball to Victor Joseph, who's faced up right away. Honduras trying to prevent Joseph from continuing to shoot. Now Honduras with a chance to counterattack. They have some numbers now. Forward gallops Edwin Munguia, but he's dispossessed. Good tracking back by Haiti. Looked promising for a moment for Honduras. It turned into nothing, and it's a Haiti throw. Victor Joseph threads his way infield. Now on the edge of the box, here's a left-footed strike wide again. Anderson Joseph, it will not go for Haiti. That's kept in play. Haiti keep on coming, despite a night of frustration, but that's not the ball they were looking for. Schneider and LeBron motioning. I was not making that run. Now at this point, very little chance for Haiti to finish in second in the group. It's looking very likely that they'll qualify as the third place team out of Group H. But just finding a goal and a, a draw in this match would feel like a win at this point for them. As hard as they've worked, as many chances and shots as they've created, as frustrated as they've been tonight, they just need some catharsis from scoring a goal and at least taking something from the match. This appears to be Anderson Joseph who stayed down. Or is it? We'll have to double check that. It might be Clarence Jean. Victor Joseph tangling there with Brian Sines. Yeah, that is Clarence Jean who's receiving the treatment. Earlier today, Cuba defeating Guadeloupe 4-0, El Salvador over Suriname 4-0. Let's see what might have happened here to Jean. Extending for that ball and then just clattered a little bit on the follow-through. 
the side of the shin, which is always painful. So this free kick for Haiti. They have a chance to trouble Honduras from another set piece, which they've done a number of times tonight. Toussaint is around it, so is Victor Joseph. It is Joseph to take. And it should be simple for the keeper, and it is. It's a good hold in the end by Macias. He had a player running right across his face, trying to put him off. His heads for the corner and runs out. LeBrun unable to reach and it's a goal kick. One more change for Haiti. Clifford Louis Jean. And it places Clarence Jean Gillet. This touch there, allowing Honduras to possibly build. That was a bit risky. Michael Morales got away with that. Back to Macias, pressured a bit by Joseph, gives it away. And now sliced right to Macias. Schneider and LeBron couldn't get enough on the lob from distance. That's difficult from that range to be fair. Owen Macias. First real mistake he's made tonight. Credit Victor Joseph for putting him under pressure and forcing that mistake. Haiti continue to pour forward. Desperate to at least leave tonight with a goal before they head into the knockout rounds. Where they will play Canada unless something really drastic happens in these final four and a half minutes plus stoppage time. And again, you wouldn't be surprised to see them give Canada quite a game. Now Honduras, chance to put this game away perhaps. Russell Cruz into the box, Cruz on target, but fairly simple save for Algarin. He wants to get things underway again quickly. Here is Clifford Luis Jean just on. Three and a half minutes remaining. See this run by Cruz. Got it on frame, didn't get much on it. Almost spun under the arms when you look at that replay. Tony Algarin almost had that elude him. Now then, this is Nairobi Vargas. Vargas pulling to the top of the box, connects with a teammate, deflected shot, beaten away. Brian Sines on frame, and Algarin had to punch it around the post. Sines with a good strike. Good save by Algarin. Corner then for Honduras, which they are not in a rush to take. Well, a second Honduras goal would be a bit harsh on Haiti, the way this game has gone, but Honduras serving it into the six-yard box, defended away. Now those blue shirts pouring forward for Haiti. This might be on for them here. This is a four against one. What an opportunity for Carrier. He spreads it to Joseph. Back to Carrier. It's Carrier. It's Joseph. It's blocked. It swings across the face, and it's blocked again, and it still won't go in for Haiti. A four against one results only in a corner kick, and that's just the way it's gone for them tonight. Hey, 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 hey. 
from the corner. They try again. That's deflected over. It will be another corner. And Kerry Carrier found himself at the top of the box a moment ago in a 4v1 situation. I think it took a little bit too long to deliver. And that deflects. That's on target, and Macias has to reach up to pluck it out of the air. Almost snuck over him and into the net. But it has felt like there's a force field around Honduras' goal tonight. Give Macias credit for that. Also remember Jose Calix with his diving goal line clearance in the first half. That's a good challenge to win the ball back by Dylan Alexis. Haiti still not giving up on finding a late equalizer. Good touch by Victor Joseph as well. But then not the best from perhaps a tired looking Anderson Joseph. 90th minute, we'll await the fourth official's indication of the stoppage time. Honduras just about there for a perfect group stage output of nine points from nine. And now they might put this to bed. Stabbed through, but too much on it. And gathered by Algarin. That's a nice ball to the right. This is Guboglo. Trying to cut to the end line. It's hacked out. Another corner coming for Haiti as we enter stoppage time, of which there will be four minutes. No, actually three, says the fourth official. Three minutes added on then. Corner pulled back to the angle. Luis Jean, far side of the box, and that comes to nothing again, and more frustration for Haiti. <laughs> Well, if it stays like this over the final two and a half minutes, Jean-Baptiste Angelo is going to have some work to do to calm his team and get them refocused for the next game, as frustrated as they'll be with this one. Honduras now seeking that killer second again. Player goes down. Flag is raised by the linesman. And it's going to be a free kick just outside the area, I think. Russell Cruz went over and apparently was fouled just outside the box. That'll work from Honduras' perspective as they'll milk more of these remaining seconds. Very close on that replay. Looked like the right decision. One final change for Honduras in these dying seconds. And the goal scorer, Russell Cruz, who was looking like the match winner. Replaced by Roberto Osorto for this final minute and change. So Asordo looks like he's going to take charge of this free kick. Saw the referee point to his watch, indicating that he'll add more time with all the time that this free kick is taken along with that substitution. So it appears we'll play beyond those three additional minutes, of which there's only 20 seconds remaining. Here's the free kick by Osordo, taken low and pinged wide off a deflection. That should be a corner, it is. And Osordo in a surprising hurry to go take it. Doesn't really need to be. And the referee blows the final whistle and that's the batch. And Honduras do enough tonight, they finish group play Flawless with nine points from nine, three wins from three.
They were made to sweat tonight by Haiti, who did everything but score over the 90 minutes. But Russell Cruz's tally in the final minute of first half stoppage time is the difference as it ends Honduras 1, Haiti 0.